Hello everyone, welcome back to tutorial 3. Today, we learn about lexical analysis. As I mentioned in the previous tutorial, lexical analysis basically takes words from tweets and then analyzes the sentiment of the tweet. It's quite simple actually and the best to begin with. So let's get started. Let me give you a simple tip. When you start back R, it might be so that you have to authenticate again. So make sure you do that after changing the working directory. As usual. Then run authentication. Go back to first tutorial to know how. Authorize app, copy the pen, and done. Okay, so moving on. First, we need to know the function that will do the lexical analysis. I've already written it for reference here. Let me explain you how it works. So the name of the function is code.sentiment. It takes these parameters, sentences, pause.words, neck.words, and dot progress is equal to none. Let me increase the font so that you can all see clearly. So sentences, pause.words, neck.words, progress equals to none. This is actually not mandatory. You can just skip it and that's the default. The sentences will basically contain the sentences, the tweets, pause.words and neck.words like we did in the last tutorial. They are the word database. And then that's it. We require these two libraries for the functions we will be using. Like lapply, it uh, works on the given parameters and then it returns a list. Now, what does it do? Uh, punctuations are replaced by blank spaces, then control words, then the decimal numbers are replaced with nothing and the new lines. Then what is done is the sentences is converted to lowercase and it is splitted. For this, we need string R function. After it's split, it returns a list which we convert to a character vector by unlist. After that, we simply use a match function to compare this, uh, this character vector taking one word at a time. We match each of them with pause.words database. Now, it will either return true, it will either add to the pause.matches if it is true, or it will return NA that is not applicable that is that word is not in the pause.words database similarly neck.matches now once that is done we want to only store pause.matches uh, only those matches which are which are not not applicable basically which are not NA so the positive words are only stored here now I mean the words in the tweet that match with the pause.words database. Similarly, neck.matches. Now, what we do is we sum it. By summing it, we'll know the exact number of words that were positive and the number of words that are negative are stored in NN. Once we're done with that, we calculate the score by simply subtracting the positive score and the negative score. Now, we can use a more complex algorithm by experimenting and analysis. For now, for the tutorial, I've kept it I have kept it very simple. After that, we define a new variable list1 and we append the score, the positive score and the negative score. By score, I mean the overall score. And then we return this list. So once we return it, we extract from the returned list the first column and name it as score underscore new. Then pp1 stores the positive scores and nn1 stores the negative scores. 
Now note all these three are list. Now we change it to data frames and then we merge all those data frames into one. And then we return the list data frame, the merge data frame. This is basically what the function is all about. It has calculated the score after comparing each word in the tree to positive database, positive word database and the negative word database. Then it calculated the overall score. It did this only after removing the control words, punctuations and then converting into lower uh, case and all that. After that, what it does is it converts it into a data frame one by one and then it merges it and it returns a merged data frame. Okay, uh, let's write basically a script to apply this function to the tweets which we wrote. Okay, new script. Remember we had stored as sample. Let me remind you. Cleaning underscore tweet. Here we had stored as sample. Finally. So we'll use this sample. Result is equals to score dot sentiment. That is the function is called sample is sent in place of sentences pause dot words comma neg dot words okay so let me keep this beside so that you understand better instead of sentences we have used sample then pause dot words and neg dot words and you don't really need to send anything because this is the default okay so what it does is it cleans the tweet and returns merged data frame. Now we need the library reshape. You'll know why very soon. And we create a copy of the resultant, the result data frame basically. Test one is equals to result one test two is equal to result two and test three is equals to result three now why are we doing this let me tell you okay let's run this uh let's run all the scripts one by one authentication is already done let's clean it We're continuing with trump.tweets, extracting 150 tweets, done. Now let's check what is there in sample, head of sample. Okay, the tweets are here. The tweets are sent here. Okay, first let's run score.sentiment. Run. Okay, successfully done. Now, let's run this. Okay. Now, what has it done? Result is called as coded sentiment. Let's see what result is storing. Okay, let me tell you why I did this. Let me tell you what result of one stores. It stores all this. See, I'll tell you in short. The score that is merged appears like this score.0l.22, score1l.60, and all this, all this data of 150 tweets. Okay? And then there are the tweets. Then, result of two stores, the tweets, and then consequently the positive score, positive.2l.35, all these scores are there. Similarly, Result of three scores, stores, negative dot zero L and all that. Okay. So now we have to put it in proper format because this is very redundant. So what do we do? We have made, so we separated it into three, rest, test one, test two, test three. Result was combination of all these three. Okay. If you want to check, we can. Result. Okay, all these things. First, at the end, there are negatives. If you keep scrolling up after negatives, there will come positives and score and so on. Okay, there are lots of negatives. The whole window is full. So if you check, you'll find out that that's true. Now what we do is, 
we create three different data frames for score, positive and negative. And for this, we remove the text column because the text column, that is this tweet part. So this is a textual part. This is repetitive. This is in all the three. So let's just remove it for now. Continuing uh, test one dollar text is equals to null. Test one is not run. Yeah, it's run. So it stores all this positive, uh, sorry, score, right? So what is test one dollar text? just the textual part okay so now if we do it now we are removing it similarly test two dollar text is equals to null and test three dollar text is equals to null okay we removed it now we store the first row containing sentiment scores in variable q let's actually store all the three differently okay Q1 is equals to test one, the first row, Q2, test two. Basically, the whole thing we were storing that all those scores with different variables, everything we are st storing, then the positive, then the negative. Okay, why? Let's see. Test one, one of row. Sorry, yes. So this whole thing is the is stored okay all the scores and everything is coming here similarly for test 2 and test 3 now we use the reshape library to melt it okay what it does is I'll show you in a minute we are renaming it a score remember all those random things that were appearing like test one one comma all these random things i don't want all this i want to merge this into one column which is called score that's what this melt thing will do okay so similarly q2 var is equal to let's call it positive okay qq3 melt q3 var is equals to negative done you want to see if it works now let's run this statement okay now qq1 all the scores are together what did it mean it using it is using id as variable that's why i left this blank so that it's used the default the id okay it's like a primary key continuing qq1 score equals null okay qq2 now we're naming a column like we want it here we are named the column score okay we're removing that column this column is not required we don't need all these names 1.l 1l.60 and all that so we're removing that Similarly, negative is getting removed. Once we're one done with that, let's create a data frame. Okay, table one is equal to data frame. Text is equals to result of one dollar text, comma score is equals to QQ1. Similarly, all right, table two, table three, result two, result uh, of two, result of three, QQ two, QQ three. Let's run the whole thing once, or let's just complete this thing. What we do at the end, we merge the tables, okay? Table underscore final.
Table 1 and data frame is created. What text did? It appended the tweets, okay, of result 1. It was there already. Because you remember in result 1, there were the tweets. Result 2, there were the tweets. That is in test 1, test 2, test 3. All three tweets were there. So we are storing that in text column. And the score in Q1, QQ1, QQ2, QQ3, like we had derived. After that, we merge the tables. But we need only one text column. We don't need redundant columns. Table 1, dollar value. Okay. Okay, we're done with this. We simply merged it. Now, let's run it one by one. We have run score of sentiment, and then we'll run function on tweet. Okay. Now, what table underscore final stores? exactly what we want it is storing the text here okay by the name text then it is storing the score the overall score okay positive score and the negative score let's see how it's working okay trump has clear mandate to stop illegal immigration and AMP reform system to prioritize American workers and then there was a URL which has been removed okay this was not completely removed because it appended N and H which should not be it's a typo but that's okay so Trump wants to stop illegal immigration okay and he wants to prioritize American workers. All right, let's see what the software says. It says that it is quite positive. There's one negativity in this because it is illegal, but overall he's trying to stop it. Okay, so it's overall positive. So the score is positive. Very nice. So similarly, you can uh, compare different things like president elect trump thank you for your warm friendship and a clear cut support for israel all right so uh this is the tweet number 147 so the score for that is it's very positive the five positive words overall it does seem a positive tweet doesn't it now we are done with this. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and you were clear about it. If you had absolutely any doubts, please let me know in the comment section below. Make sure to rate, comment and subscribe. In the next tutorial, we'll move on towards the front end and more variations of analyzing this information that we have derived. Thank you.